Russian. Ghana. Ghana. Uh, 100%. Yeah, 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 African. I'm doing this for the continent. It's for that new African woman. However, there's still the world out there. We are not isolated. So you kind of need to appeal to, you need to appeal to the times. People are not walking around in Kaba State day and night. They're not playing Kaba State in the club. You can find a way to jazz it up to make the young person feel like, oh, this is cool, I want to wear that. And then they're carrying a piece of who we are with them without even realizing it, because it's the thing, right? Yeah. So for me, it's understanding what is happening all around the world and making or tailoring what you are and, and, and what you represent to to make sense to everybody else. It doesn't, it doesn't mean you're selling out or, oh, but this is too Western. What is Western? It, it, you know, we live in a global village, so you can't really just box yourself up and say, well, I'm proudly African. So you need to, first of all, understand yourself, have that global view of what it is you're doing. And like I said, it's not like we had a bucket of, or a suitcase of a amount of cash sitting there to like have a PR team and so on. But I strongly believe that it's because the brand was clear about what we were about, even though I was pretty young, so I wasn't as clear as I am now. But it was pretty clear what we represented. So then the world picks up on it. Then you have somebody inviting you to a show here. Then you have a feature in Harper's Bazaar. Then Vogue Italia is like, ooh, that as an African. I don't mind being called an African designer, but it got your attention, did it not? And there's still, there's still a machine that, there's still a wheel that is churning, whether we like it or not. For decades, the fashion industry has existed, right? And there are certain, you know, um, what do you call it? Certain ways or certain systems and processes that have been tried and tested. So there's, we can't shy away from it. We can't shun it and say, well, anything from the West or any parts of the world is bad, and we should, we should try and find an African way of, you know, just a way to do it in Africa. If this is how the global fashion scene works, and knowing who we truly are, how do we merge the, like, how do we merge both worlds? Because they've been successful at it. So in my head, that's a strategy. We see how well it's done, how it works really and truly. Just get to know your woman. Get to know the, the African woman that it is that, that we're designing for. Get into her head. Understand how she spends. Understand how she buys. Where is she going? What is she doing? And tap into that and we get killing because we are trying to make money. <laughs> <laughs> It all really starts from knowing truly who you are and appreciating that, no matter what it is. Whether you're, you know, you're not from an affluent background or whatnot, it doesn't matter. Just be confident in who you are and what you represent and push that on. So that's how I see global. Amen. Just you know, understand what is happening everywhere else. Know yourself, merge the two worlds, and I think it'll make magic, right? Yeah. Um, and, and, and there are two things. Um, the, the second question was two things that we could change. I really would love to, to, to see like our, our local designers or anyone who works in fashion just have a clear vision for what it is that they're doing. You, can't, you couldn't possibly have started a whole company because I want to be like my neighbor. <laughs> it, it, it's impossible. You have unique experiences. You have, unique, um, you have a unique story to tell. So develop that. But how do we even get people to just be comfortable being themselves yeah. and appreciating that and 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 just just understanding how this whole industry works as a whole also globally so that's one thing i'm not sure if it's from the education point of view and because i'm tired of seeing or even speaking to interns from baby fashion schools who are just so focused on oh i want to sew or i want to be de a designer like think bigger or oh, oh, i want to be like christy brown uh-uh christy brown we're not there yet so, so like as far to even like greater things think about I want to capture the continent Thank or you. continents and then how do I work towards that? Then the last, the second thing I'll change is, so when you are so confident in who you are and like what your vision is for your brand, you are not worried about competition mm -hmm. and coming mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. and collaborating. Because right now nobody's talking to each other. Mm -hmm. Here we're talking. Mm -hmm. we're not ourselves. If you're confident, you're not afraid that, oh, she's going to, uh, I'm going to show her my style. It's not about your style. Mm. It's you have different ethos, right? Yes. So um, just collaborating, talking, and it's just not about fashion design, it's the media, the models, because we need to get to that point. If we are not a body. We can't even change legislation. We can't, like, who's going to take us seriously as a fashion industry for us to even, like, get over that threshold? We'll just be operating as pockets. Eh? Mm -hmm. Oh, Christy Brown was involved. Mm -hmm. So what? If, 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 you know, how are you even empowering other people? That's how I yeah. view all of this. So those are two things I've changed. I don't know the answers, but yeah. Thank you. <laughs>
Yeah, 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 yeah.